Welcome to Pachaya Talks channel and today we are going to talk about reliability. We had a very good discussion on the overview of war or well-architected framework or review. <laughs> so sometimes we call it WAF, but WAF we already know it's in firewall. So we call it war, which means review at the end, but it doesn't matter. We are talking about well-architected framework and today we are going to talk about reliability because in our uh, framework that we went through all the pillars, the first one was the reliability. So let's try to understand the reliability little uh, further. We'll explore it further. So let's try to understand uh, reliability first. In simple terms, it means ability of a system to recover from failures and uh, continue to function. It's that simple. For example, is anything reliable? What does it mean? That's what it means. When you need it, it is there. You need your friend. If, if, if you are in pain, if you are in a financial crisis, if you are in, uh, you need someone's help for your parents because you don't live with them, right? So whether you can rely on your friend or not, same principles apply on the application, whether you can rely on the application or not. So that's what the reliability means in simple terms. Let's explore it further. So I have these few points to uh, cover it from all the places. So the very first is commitment. Because <clears throat> whenever there is an application, there is a customer, right? So reliability ensures your application can meet the commitment you make to your customers, right? How reliable is your application? How much downtime is acceptable? Those kind of things. There is a proper discussion of the SLAs and KPIs to measure it. So reliability ensures your application meet the commitments that you have made with your customers. And architecting resiliency into your application framework ensures your workloads are available, available and can recover from failures at any scale. So in simple terms, that what it is. But you must be wondering why I have mentioned this uh, MTBF versus MTTR. It's because just for the reference, because in traditional application development, there has been a focus on increasing the mean time between failures, MTBF. And effort was spent trying to prevent system from failing. But in cloud computing, a different mindset is required. Cloud applications must be designed to expect occasional failures and recover from, the, from them because failure happens. We have accepted it and worked to minimize MTTR. So these terms are, uh, are very relevant. So we should know what these terms means. That's what this means. Mean time between failures the time between two failures and mean time to recovery. You may have multiple failures, but your time to recover is very quick. If uh, you could relate, I'm talking about applications which can recover by themselves. Self-healing application, those kind of stuff. Anyways, we'll cover all of it during the principles. <clears throat> so here in cloud, we acknowledge that failure happened. Instead of trying to prevent failures altogether, the goal is to minimize the effects of a single failing component. And today we are going to discuss principles that we keep in mind for reliable element of well-architected framework. So it is a theoretical, but it is very important. So these are the six principles that I have borrowed from Microsoft documentation so that we should not miss anything. And we'll uh, share the URL or link if you would like to go in detail. So let's start with the very first. We all love <clears throat> availability or creating high available architecture. Whenever you talk to your customer, you simply ask, uh, what about the availability and everyone everyone says yeah our application should be available all the time but you need to explain you need to understand you need to make it uh, clear what exactly you meant by that right so 
you may have applications which doesn't need to be a 24 seven or if I rephrase it, it is okay if there's a downtime, it's not hampering the business like your internal applications, right? So reliability is a subjective concept for an application to be appropriately reliable. It must reflect the business requirement. Why? Because there is a trade-off we talked about it, right? So for example, a mission critical application with 99.9% .9 of SLA requires higher level of reliability than another application which which only needs 95% uh, SLA. Because both applications are different. Both are serving a different purpose. It could be internal application versus external application. It could be a different customers. You can apply your leaves. Doesn't matter whether the application is available or not today. You can apply it tomorrow. It's not hampering the business. But if your mission critical application is going down, there is a business loss. There is a there is a cost involved, right? So cost implications are inevitable when introducing greater reliability and high availability. This trade-off should be carefully considered. <clears throat> Whenever we try to make any application highly available and, and reliable, we need to add more components or we need to add uh, backups, replicas, or double components to balance the uh, toleration of the failure. So of course, it demands or it requires more money. So if you are paying more money, but the profit is less, it doesn't make any sense. That's why you need to design for business requirement. Now let's check <clears throat> design for failures. That's our second principle. So we have already talked Failure is impossible to avoid in a highly distributed and multi-tenant environment like Azure. By anticipating failures from individual components to, to uh, entire Azure regions, you can uh, uh, develop a solution in a resilient way to increase reliability. We need to define an availability strategy to capture how the application remains available when uh, in a failure state. It should apply across all application component. You may have the dependencies and if your application is, is available, but the dependency uh, goes on toss, then of course you miss the SLA. In addition to an availability strategy, we should also define BCDR strategy. Business continu Continuity Disaster Recovery, BCDR strategy for the application and of course its dependencies. A disaster recovery uh, strategy should capture how the application responds to a, to a disaster situation such as a regional outage or the loss of critical platform service using either a redeployment, warm spare, active passive, active active approach. So design for failure, we are already predicting things are going, things will go wrong. Any component may get uh, fail. So we are, we are keeping those things in mind and we are applying high, uh, high HA or availability strategy. Along with that, we are also applying BCDS strategy, both the strategy. That's how we are preparing uh, for failure. Now, another one is very important, which is application health. Means monitoring, of course, because if you monitor something, you can predict or you can fix it before it breaks, right? For example, it's your car. And you're about to go on a long drive and you monitor one of your tire is not good you can fix it then there rather than meeting with an accident, right? So before mitigating issues that impact application reliability, you must first detect these issues. 
by monitoring the operation of an application uh, relative to a uh, healthy state, you can detect and predict reliability issues, right? There is a, a proper state and there is a state which is not so proper. So by only by monitoring, you can figure it out, right? So monitoring allows you to take swift and remedial action as well. Plain and simple, implement health probes and check functions to identify degradation of your application health and performance. Check long running workflows proactively, latencies and, and your KPIs of an application uh, health and set appropriate threshold values so that you'll start getting the alerts before things go wrong. And we can also have uh, things in place which could simultaneously fix things, self-healing, which is another principle, but it also relates here, right? Drive automation. One of the leading cause of application downtime is human error due to the uh, deployment of insufficiently tested software or through misconfiguration or by mistake or by anything where the human or manual intervention is required, things may go wrong. To minimize the possibility and consequences of human errors, it is vital to strive for automation in all aspects of uh, your solution. Automation definitely, definitely improves the reliability, your testing, your deployment, your management, your configuration, and of course, time. Then we need to design for self-healing. Self-healing. Well, it seems magical, but true. Self-healing will increase your reliability uh, by N numbers. So self-healing describes the ability of a system to deal with failures automatically. Now, automation, the first one, and prior to that, application health and design for failures, everything is coming up together. Self-healing. So handling failures uh, happens through predefined remediation protocols. That's how you can self-heal. This happens, this should work. That happens, this should work in a simple way. So it's an advanced concept that requires a high level of system maturity with monitoring and automation, of course. Let's check a few examples to keep this in perspective. Transient failures may occur due to momentary loss of network connectivity, a drop database connection, or a timeout uh, when a service is busy. Build retry logic into your application to handle transient failures. Right there. Retry after a transient failure, but if the failure persists, you can end up with too many uh, callers hammering a failing service. This can lead to uh, cascading failures as requests back up. Use the circuit breaker pattern to fail fast. Application may experience certain spikes in different uh, in traffic that can overwhelm services on the on the back end. To avoid this, use the queue based load leveling pattern to queue work items to run asynchronously. Another example of self healing. If an instance can't reach, fail over to another instance. For things that are stateless, like a web server, put several instances behind a load balancer or a traffic manager. For things that store state, like, like database, use replicas and failover. Depending on the data store and how it replicates, this may require the application to deal with uh, eventual consistency. From inception, self-healing should be the aspiration to maximize re uh, reliability. And with these few examples, uh, retry, circuit breaker, instance, uh, I think self-healing is pretty, pretty uh, obvious now. But let's see, the last, but not the least, scale out. We talked about scale out many times, but for the sake of reliability, principle scale out is a concept that focuses on the ability of a system to respond to demand through horizontal growth. As traffic grows, more resources, uh, more, more resource units 
are added in parallel instead of increasing the size of the existing resource of course if you're increasing the size there is a downtime and there is a limit we are adding one more server horizontal scaling no downtime there is no limit through scale units, a system can handle expected and unexpected traffic increase essential to overall reliability. And if the automation, if the correct automation is in place, then of course it will save you cost. With these principles, let's meet in another video where we are going to talk about reliability or <clears throat> further where we'll see what all things that Azure offers us to make a highly reliable uh, architecture.